I'm back with you, Mishak. Thank you, Professor. Your, your story is unfolding so beautifully as if you, that's how you designed it. <laughs> From the moment you. you became aware of yourself, from Maribung to where you are now. And, and I wonder if at some stage you, you ever wondered if there might, there might be a, an upper hand up there taking you through these steps. Uh, so you left the Blue Strata uh, after you were found by a recruitment agency to go and join the Japanese multinational Komatsu. And that is they. That is where. Where are they based? They are based in um, Elands Fontaine in uh, Johannesburg. I think Jimmy State. Yeah. 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 Okay. And and you became what? The shipping manager. Then. And that was the first time you became a manager. Did you have people reporting to you? Yes. How many? I I had a team of about I think four. Administrators. Wow. Yes, yes. From having nobody reporting to you to take over four people reporting to you. Yeah, and the challenging part of it is uh, there were all older people. Older people. They've yeah. been there for years. Yeah. For many, many years. And I remember the one old man from uh, Katlevon. Um, I can't remember his. Uh, Cinema, I forgot it now. Oh, Mr. Mia, yes, Tamba Mia. Mm. He, I think when I joined, he has been with Tamban for plus minus 40 years. And I had to manage him as <laughs> an inexperienced manager. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was indeed, you know, uh, interesting times. And, and you did well? I did well. I did well. Mm. Mm. But I guess, were, were they specialists or you had to show them what to do? No, I think that they were spe specialists, but obviously from, you know, uh, performance management point of view, you know, developing relationships with, you know, um, service providers, you know, developing, you know, policies and procedures coming up, with, you know, service level agreements, also to manage, you know, the performance of peering um, agents. Um, and uh, we also had an independent auditor who was, you know, checking whether, you know, uh, are we, you know, effectively and economically, you know, importing, you know, our equipment as well as spare parts. Mm. So, yeah, then I was tasked with, you know, uh, our responsibility of, you know, uh, optimizing and systematizing, you know, the environment. What does Komatsu do? So Komatsu is an earth moving uh, equipment, you know, manufacturer. You know, it is in the in the industry lingo they call it yellow metals. You know, all these you know big you know equipment you see alongside construction sites, but mainly in the mining industry, you know, your open cost. So they manufacture your um, TLBs, um they do, you know, loaders. You are motor graders, you are excavators, you know, wheeled and hydraulic. They also manufacture and distribute the, um, you know, highway dump trucks, you know, you have to use them on the roads. And you also have the so-called ADTs, you know, your articulated dump trucks that are normally used, you know, in the uh, construction industry. So in South Africa, there was no manufacturing activities happening, but it was more of a strategic, you know, uh, marketing and selling division of Komatsu, but obviously focusing more on after sales support to making sure that, you know, parts, you know, are available, you know, to service, you know, all the, all the equipment that were imported from various factories. But the majority of those in equipment were uh, manufactured in Japan, imported into the country. I know we used to bring in, you know, all these uh, big, you know, mining trucks from the USA. Also, the small, you know, we call they are called, you know, telehandlers. Uh, but more on the industrial side, you know, like for example, in the warehouses when they use the when for lifting. Uh, lifting tracks and all those type of things as well. So we used to import them from Italy. Yeah. Mm.
Mm. That was a totally different world in terms of the product. Yes, yes, completely, completely from what I used to do at Rolf and what I used to do at the Investment in Portugal. But I must indicate Sam, that the shipping industry cut across, you know, all the industries. You know, the, 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 the principle of shipping is whether it's a flour uh, or ice cream or a big, you know, uh, truck. Uh, or a big machinery, we will move it for you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's the beauty about it, yeah. And, and did you find the knowledge that you acquired at Kets, Rolich, Blue Strata mm. helpful at Komatsu? Yes, very much. So very, very helpful. Like, for example, uh, if you develop in you know, that, you know, technical expertise in terms of, you know, negotiating, you know, uh, freight rates, um, negotiating, um, what do you call, you know, uh, contracts. So it becomes, you know, a lot easier and with commercial background, you know, the technical background as well. So it can be very, very handy. Mm, mm, sure. Rolich was German, Blue Strata, South African, Komatsu, Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> so, so how long were you with the Japanese? Uh, I was with them for almost five years. Wow, that's a good number of years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I fell in love with uh, the, the Japanese culture and things like that. I mean, the, 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 the most uh, um, important lesson from them was, you know, the, 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 the hard-working culture, you know, the, the, the quality of work that they put, you know. Um, yeah, th those are the things that truly attracted me, you know, to, to their culture of working. Like, very workaholic. Mm, mm. And and uh, are you still dipping onto the knowledge and the the some of the practices from them even today? Yes. Um. One of the important lessons I learned from the Japanese was that you know every time you are faced with a challenge, ask yourself a question that says, what is my contribution towards the problem? Instead of just, you know, quickly rushing to blame others or point fingers at others. So that, you know, stood uh, with me for a very, very long time. I found that very, very profound. You know, every time you, you analyze a you know, problem, you ask yourself, okay, how could I, uh, you know, uh, have contributed towards this problem? Had I, you know, handled, you know, this query in this manner, wouldn't I have, you know, found solution quicker and things like that, yeah. Mm. Mm. Sounds like there is the concept of taking the ownership of the problem. Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, after five years, then, where did you go to? Yeah, um... I must say, I took a very serious, you know, detail, you know. <laughs> uh, I went to join, you know, uh, one of the top, you know, uh, insurance companies in South Africa called Liberty. Uh, and I remember when I left Commerce, the HR manager there tried to say to me, no, but in as much as you want to grow and develop, but your move is strange. It doesn't make sense, mm. you know. You're leaving a company where you you, <laughs> you are moving, you know, big machines. But then, where are you going to move the paper? <laughs> <laughs> We're at liberty. <laughs> yeah, at liberty. What yeah. attracted you to them? So, basically, the position there um, was for a logistics manager and there to actually support, you know, sales and marketing, you know, uh, division of the insurance company in terms of making sure that, you know, um, uh, your, your marketing and sales materials, like, you know, your application forms, you know, flyers, you know, banners, pens, you know, cards and all those type of things as well. So they get, you know, um, uh, sourced in from various suppliers, come to the central distribution center, but obviously outsourced, then get delivered to various you know, Liberty branches. I think Liberty had more than 60 branches uh, in the country and also 
also cross border and maybe between South African and SADC region, Southern uh, Development Community region, yeah, yeah. Mm. The Sutu, Botswana, Nandia, Zambia, and so forth, as well as Namibia. Mm. Yeah. Sure. And did you found that your colleague was right that your move was not much well informed? Yeah, uh, however, I must say, again, in terms of, you know, because given my, you know, uh, flexibility and adapting, you know, well into your environment, I think for the first uh, two years, I was quite happy in the environment, um, given that I was also given, you know, a uh, facilities management portfolio to look after, you know, the, the transportation. I mean, looking after the fleet of the organization that may need be used by salespeople, we also used to have a shuttle services that transport, you know, workers from main transportation, you know, uh, terminals and hubs, you know, to the office and so forth. Yeah, it became that. But obviously, with my eagerness, you know, to learn, you know, new things, I became, uh, yeah, easily bought, so to say, then, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and this time at Liberty, how many people are reporting to you I think maybe that's where the stretch was because I had about what thirty people. Thirty. Thirty years. Sure. Thirty people. We yeah, are reporting to From me. From four to thirty. To thirty years. Mm. And when I got there, I said to my supervisor, "Yeah, now this is not practical. I can't have thirty people reporting to me. Then I need to redo the project." Yes. Then luckily, then I think I was given a budget. But then I created, you know, two supervisor roles. Then I had two supervisors. And then yeah, mm. who was looking mainly, you know, uh, after the, the the drivers and there were a whole lot of you know other guys in other things as well. Mm. Mm. And and these are uh, are they educated people, literate, or are they just semi semi skilled workers? Yeah, I think that's where they. The, the challenge was as well. There were many semi skilled workers. Mm, mm, mm. Sure. Yeah. And you were there for how long? I was with Liberty, I think, from June 2013 up until March 2016. Mm. Mm. So you do stay in companies at least minimum of three years, no? Yes, yes, yes. Is that is that is that a plan? The the, the short test was actually at the uh, imports. I mean, sorry, at the investor import solutions. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, sometimes in the beginning you tell yourself, you know, what you want to stabilize, but you realize when you get there, but you still feel that you know you you're not developing, you're not growing. Mm. Then you okay you start you know, looking for new opportunities. But uh, I think why I didn't really look for opportunities but just came with us when I went to uh, Komatsu. So then at Komatsu as well, um, I also felt that, you know, I think four, I mean, five years is long and I felt that I was not, you know, uh, growing the development. Mm -hmm. And tell me, as you're making these moves, what is happening to your academic uh, programs what are you are you studying as well at the same time or are you just focusing on making career no i was also studying i think uh post um graduating you know from pets i pursued you know my studies further by completing you know a bachelor of commerce in transport and economics then subsequent to that then i graduated in a postgraduate diploma in transport and logistics as well so um, if I can, you know, save enough, then I want to, you know, study towards, you know, this uh, Java management, you know, qualifications like uh, MBA or MBA. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. And, and uh, which, at which university did you do your, your become in transport and economics uh, and logistics? Yeah, um, I enrolled through University of South Africa, popularly known as UNITA in South Africa. The same also for your postgraduate diploma that was UNISA. Yeah. Mm. So so you you got your gown, my friend. 
from the cat <laughs> from cat's program you you went for the gown. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know your story is really amazing, and I remember very well when when you were down there as a trader and coming yeah. down to. To 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 Kometa and then the cats. I always say to people, I last saw Mishak via Kometa into cats, and I lost I lost track where what then happened. But one thing I know, every time he changes companies, he will call me. I'm making a move. I'm making a move. <laughs> uh, and uh, and another thing that I always say to people. I don't know what he's studying, but one thing for sure I know is at UNISA, and it looks like he he's making great progress there. Yes. Yeah. So this is also a catch up for me, and uh, congratulations. I mean, yo, yeah. No, you are right when you say they always think you are too serious. Indeed, you are serious. You take your life very serious, and you, you take actions. So, so, so now you you stayed at Liberty, and when did you leave Liberty? Because I know you're not there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I the man, the man on the move. Yeah, <laughs> March uh, twenty sixteen. Yeah. Twenty sixteen. So, yeah. And and you know what's so fascinating? Now you're starting to change industries too. You don't just change and stay in one industry. Was that was that also intentional? Yeah, I guess that that's the beauty of uh, my experience and uh, qualifications in what I studied as well. So, I think for me, it was just to, you know, um, have an exposure on how, you know, various industries, you know, work and things like that. But then with that, you know, that, that's like, you know, being an accountant, you know, uh, just to pick on that one. Being an accountant, you know, you can work in any industry because the principles are the same. You know, we're going to look at the same thing and things like that. The only thing that is different is the environment. So, yeah, we, with uh, my skills, experience, you know, knowledge and so forth, I think they are, they cut across in all the, 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 the industries. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, I think I'm best suited, you know, to operate in uh, mm. every industry, yeah. Mm. As long as I could to be moved, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. So, so you, it is after how many years that you leave a uh, liberty life? It was after, I think, Almost three years. Yes. And then you yeah. go to where? Yeah, and then um, I joined, you know, um, one of the uh, uh, multinational petrochemical, you know, industries, you know, called Sasok in South Africa. Then I went there as a clearing forwarding manager. And uh, strangely enough, you know, people were saying, clearing and forwarding, we never heard of that. What is that? That's when I realized, you know, that this, you know, industry is so unique and uh, it is so important in various organizations, but people are not even aware what it does, you know, how it exists and things like that. Yeah, so that's a uh, joint, you know, also in um, uh, April 2016, then I was first, you know, uh, allocated, you know, in the uh, one of the biggest you know, plants in South Africa in a location called an area called Secunda. Mm. Because that's where, you know, a lot of activities are happening. Yes. Yeah. So so you so you 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 were relocated. Actually you I mean you relocated yourself because that is when you joined immediately they re- they they located you in Secunda. Yes. Yeah. That must have been strange for you because Secunda, man, is uh, is really an island, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on it. Yeah, um, like um, for me, that again, perhaps you know, with you know, I'm a quite you know, for new knowledge, you know, my inquisitiveness, you know, again, uh, flexible and things like that. I just became curious, and so okay, I never worked anywhere else outside in the Holden province. I think. Uh, let me go there, you know, explore and get to see, you know, well, what, you know, this, you know, new career move actually calls for me. And, yeah, I must say, I, yeah, I found, you know, an environment which provided me with that opportunity to really excel in 
terms of you know what I do well. Um, while within the organization as well, um, there was an opportunity again to manage you know uh, another team which is more on you know procurement environment. Then I had to you know move you know back to the head office in Centre. Let's hold it there. When we come back, we take it further and focus on what you are currently doing at Sasson. We'll be back.